Hi, in this presentation I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of assigning an IP address using CLI. In this case I'm going to connect uh, via the Telnet or serial uh, protocol and assign an IP address to a switch. So out of the box our switches do not have an IP address. So and what I'm doing here is I'm just doing a quick scan utilizing an application called High Discovery. High Discovery utilizes our High Discovery protocol. Uh, this uh, will identify a switch regardless of its IP address. It's a great tool to, uh, to discover switches and to assign IP addresses. So uh, as part of the entire software suite, we have High Discovery, which is just the um, discovery and uh, addressing tool. We then also have an application called High View. Uh, High View is a, a switch discovery protocol um, or switch discovery application. Um, it utilizes the High Discovery protocol, and it is also um, ha or has an embedded switch browser, switch management browser incorporated into it. And then on the upper end, we also have Industrial High Vision. This is our NMS, our network management software. Uh, this uh, incorporates High Discovery. High view and an entire network management suite uh, for notifications, alarming, um, long term management and monitoring, uh, and just a whole bunch more. So, in this case, the switch that I want to address is this Mach 102. This is one of our classic series of switches. Um, it is a rack mount switch, uh, it is a uh, layer 2 professional switch. And I could theoretically simply double click on this and assign an IP address to the switch. Or in this case, what we're going to do is we're instead going to utilize the CLI protocol to assign an IP address. So all of our manuals you will find in our or on our FTP server. So if you go to ftp.hirschman-usa.com under industrial networking, manuals and then by product you will find the respective switch. So in this case what I've done is I've gone ahead and downloaded the entire manual collection and instead of opening up the manual collection then within the web browser space I've opened it up um, in a, uh, Adobe Acrobat Reader. So first download this and then open it in, um, in Acrobat Reader and you will have a much better experience because there are multiple catalogs or multiple manuals all embedded within one file. So first off, in order to connect to the uh, to the switch utilizing serial, um, the serial co um, connection is via a somewhat custom uh, DB9 to RJ11 uh, serial cable, and the port speeds that are needed or the port configuration for the COM port uh, are listed in the manual. You'll see them right here. And instead of utilizing a cabled connection, uh, what I do is I utilize a Bluetooth to serial adapter. Uh, this negates the need for a, um, a long cable. Instead, what I have is I have a, um, a short dongle uh, that is simply connected to the switch and to this uh, Bluetooth to serial adapter. And it allows me to connect to the switch via Bluetooth. So what you'll see here is you'll see here the, the connection into that switch. I'm going to log in as the admin and I'm going to utilize the admin default password which is private all in lowercase. So once logged in I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to enable a higher level of authority within this switch. And from here, I'm going to cheat a little bit because I want to make sure that I don't make any mistakes. So within the manual, you'll also find the, um, the appropriate instructions for assigning an IP address. So I've already gone in with enable. And next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deactivate DHCP. So this is going to be network protocol none. 
and then I'm going to assign the IP address. So I want network parms 10.10.10.3 with a 24-bit subnet mask. And the last step that I want to do is I want to make sure that all these changes that are in volatile memory, they may be effective and, um, and currently live, but I want to make sure that the settings are moved from volatile memory into non-volatile memory. This means that if there's a power um, uh, or power reset, or if for some reason um, someone were to unplug the switch, that these changes will survive that reset. So in order to do so, I'm going to do a copy system running config NV RAM startup config. Yes, I do want to do this. And what this will do is this will effectively put the configurations from volatile memory into non-volatile memory. And as you can see here, this um, the switch has taken the IP address. And what I'm also now going to do is I'm going to reboot. Uh, this is not a necessary step, but it's always a, um, a nice extra step that, um, that can be done just to verify that all the settings have, um, have taken hold. Um, Prior to doing so, an alternate means that I can do uh, without disrupting this operation of the switch, I can go into the High View application and I can log into that switch. I'm going to go in as an admin with the same admin default password of private, a lowercase. And you'll see here that the load save icon is a floppy disk. If this were a warning triangle, it would mean that there are unsaved configurations. So with this, I know for a fact that this IP address that I've given the switch will retain and persevere through a power cycle. So at this point in time, there really is no need to necessarily go ahead and do a restart. Uh, what I'm going to do though is I'm, I will save that restart for something else. Um, this is not necessarily um, something that needs to be done here, so I'm going to go ahead and close my Telnet session. And the other thing that I want to do is I want to make sure that this switch has the latest firmware. And with this, I again go back into the FTP site and under firmware, um, because the Mach 100 is a, one of our classic switches, I'll go to that. And from within here, I can go to the Mach 102. I can now download the firmware zip file. And all that is needed from within here is this one bin file. Um, you can copy this to your desktop or, or as needed. And then once that's been done, once you've copied this to your uh, your PC or somewhere on the network um, where you can find this, from here you can, within the software tab, browse to the file. So this is a bin file and the reason I'm doing this is just so that it eliminates a lot of the extraneous files that I have in my desktop. And here is that bin file that I just downloaded and saved to my system. And from this point, I can simply open it and click on update. The update process takes about three to five minutes. Uh, once done, um, it'll give you a notification indicating that it's done. Uh, click on OK and then do a reload. And when you do the reload, you should see the new firmware under the stored version. The running config is what the switch is currently operating on. In order to have the switch run on the stored version, you will need to power cycle this. 
This can either be done by simply power cycling the switch or going to the restart, doing a cold start, and clicking on OK. The switch will take about 35 seconds to come back up online. Once it comes back online, the switch should come up on the new firmware that you had stored uh, on the switch. So in the software tab, the stored version and the running version should be one and the same. I hope that answers any questions that you may have. Have a great day.